Hey everyone, Matt Sperling here, giving you a deck tech on my favorite deck in Star Wars CCG. The hyperdrive generator is gone. The for those of you who haven't played with this objective at all, it's going to restrict you to these Episode One characters and aliens. So you'll see, you know, Lando sneaks in there as an alien. But for the most part, we've got Republic characters, Episode One Jedi, and then again aliens and some Rebel or Republic starships rather. You you're going to start with a couple locations out that we'll get to in a moment. And then your goal is to stack opponent's cards under credits will do fine. When you've earned four credits that way, you get to flip the objective. When you flip the objective, you're going to get a bonus to Republic characters, one to power, two to forfeit. Um, aliens can't have a deploy cost modified to tattoo any locations. That's going to have a couple different implications. And then importantly, whenever you complete a non-substitute battle destiny draw, you'll retrieve one force into hand. That's going to add up quickly if you're battling and drawing destiny, whether it's you know, on the ground or in space. Once during opponent's turn, if Queen's Royal Starship is out of system, you can activate two force. So a little bit of a force rebate. You can get the right starship um, up in space, and there's a way to find it from the deck, so that's helpful. And then during your control phase, opponent loses one force for each battleground occupied by Amidala or Jar Jar. So, okay, a lot going on there. I'll talk about some of the strengths and weaknesses of the deck by starting with how the deck starts comes out of the gate because actually that actually will lead us right into some of the weaknesses and then we'll circle back to some of the strengths. So you get to start with Watto's Junk Guard and the City Outskirts in play. Now that's only three light side icons and two for dark. That's the fundamental weakness of this deck. You don't go first. Dark side goes first. You're not you know you're not throwing room and you're only net you're only plus one on the loca from a location perspective on activation. Really not a good ratio. And that combined with the fact that you really need to get down to the board quickly, both because you do get a force generation boost for occupying the junkyard, and because you need to force train or battle at the junkyard in order to start stacking those credits, because you get a credit stacked when you force train at the junkyard or you win a battle at the junkyard. There's a new card that lets you get one at most Espo as well, but for the most part, you've got to occupy the junkyard. So those things combine to create sort of a fundamental weakness in the deck. It's not necessarily a weakness you can't overcome, but it's certainly something to be aware of. For example, by giving your opponent two icons, plus the opponent setup, you might, they might have enough force to deploy Vader turn one to the junkyard. It's not that uncommon that might happen. With a newer objective, like the set 19, I think it is, objective for light, that, they thought of that problem ahead of time and actually made a location where like you know Vader can't deploy on the first turn, something like that. Well, Hyperdrive doesn't have that. So that's a problem, right? If you're playing against Dark Side mains, they, they're going to throw a Maul or a Vader down pretty quickly, and they're going to have the force and the initiative to do that. And you're only going to be activating three, plus you know, you'll have your Walkling, but it's just not going to be overwhelming activation. Until you can get a Jedi down to the Junkyard, get one, bo get one icon from the Jedi, two, two more bonus from the text of the Junkyard, then your activation starts going, but you can see the problem there, right? It sort of requires you to have that commitment ready to go. So what are the things that offset that, that, that actually end up playing into the strengths of the deck or the discussion of the strengths of the deck? So first of all, there are some powerful starting effects that come with this deck. First is Jedi Business. It's going to make Qui-Gon deploy minus one. That gets you one of those critical force back. If you can set up to deploy Qui-Gon and make that your sort of often first play, that's why I've got three of this, even though it's one destiny, I've got three of this Qui-Gon in this deck. This Qui-Gon was built to sort of hang out a site alone and hold his own. So it's really a perfect setup. It's only going to cost you five to deploy. That's where this deck really shines. You can get that early Qui-Gon down alone. Opponent's going to have a tough time against it, and you'll start to force drain. The other thing, that, again, I should have mentioned this in the weaknesses section, but because you're trying to force drain to get those credits stacked, it's going to cost you three force to do that. You're not going to occupy space early, you know, the vast majority of games. So not only do you have to invest in this Jedi to get that three activation bonus I talked about, but I'm going to have to spend that three force on force training. And so again, not necessarily going to be able to replenish my hand or deploy additional resources. But on the other hand, Qui-Gon is very menacing. The Jedi business also pulls a sight and also pulls lightsabers. So that's good. That's gonna, you're going to get the new Qui-Gon's lightsaber just came out. will help you out. Undercover spies here are lost. That actually fixed a new weakness of the a weakness of the deck. I haven't played with these set 21 cards yet, but I've added them to my deck and I'm excited to try them, but I haven't tried them yet. So some of the things, some of these are experimental, but 
You'll, you'll also use a puller to help your activation. This is a new one from set 21 as well. It's going to pull Skywalker Hut. That's a two for me, none for you. And that Twix is going to help you also pull pull down a C-3PO and or a Shmi. I've got C-3PO part showing this deck. And so that's going to help you again sort of get through, get see more cards. And that's going to help you both put back high destiny cards, but also maybe find additional things that could, that could help you activate. Like additional Jedi, because remember a lot of the, a lot, some a lot of your characters, a fair amount, a fair number of them actually have that icon themselves. They become important as you're starting to fortify the junkyard. You'll want to add those Jedi, and then of course you've got this location. You start with can pull a Jedi from your reserve deck to deploy there. That's helpful as well. If you didn't find the Qui Gon, even though you played three, or, or now it's time to fortify with a, let's say a mace, you can pull it with that. That becomes really important. And so these things start to add up and give you that sort of. Ability to pull a lot of this. Set 21 is helping you out. With this as a puller, as well as there's a new most spell that will then pull pull down a new effect. So I'll let you look at all those Set 21 cards on yourself, and I'll be assessing them right with you. I haven't really played with them yet, like I said. But it's going to add to your overall suite of cards. You can deploy a table to set you up. Now, once you have that set up, why is it so good? Well, first of all, the force they lose every single turn of the game, if you can force rain or win a battle at the junkyard, stacks here can't be reduced. Plus, it's illegal to force train. So let's say somebody's satisfying, you know, ultimatum, resistance, and they're they're only losing a maximum of two per force train. Well, they're going to potentially lose the two to the force train, but they're still stacked the one of the credits you find. You also have this effect that you get to start called We're Leaving V that lets you pull two credits off once you don't need them anymore to flip, once you flipped, and start retrieving starships into hand. That's why I play two starships, so I can have one to deploy if I need to and one to retrieve, or just... Maybe I don't go to space. The objective lets you pull a location into hand. Some people use the Camino to get more activation going. That's one. That's a valid way to play. I like to use Tatooine because I don't always deploy it. I don't like deploying it against a deck that has a lot of space in it. I like to hold it in my hand and maybe I can deploy it later and drop a ship to it and sort of have, have a place to go where they're not stacked. But there's, I mean, that's against different matchups, you, you'll play that differently. But I, I like Tatooine and you also, the shuttling becomes very important. You're overstacked at a junk card oftentimes. You want to pull those Anakins or whoever those those high forfeit characters up to the up to space sometimes via shuttling and a capital starship. A big boost from set twenty one to the deck I think is a six destiny character. It's not often you get to say that, you know, outside the realm of you know the classic Death Star two ultra rares. Six destiny character lets you play multiple copies and feel good about it. It's going to be ch pretty cheap to deploy and high forfeit high ability, so I'm not looking to necessarily occupy the junkyard with this alone, although against some decks maybe it's not a disaster to do so, but I am looking to use this card to have a Skywalker to go with Padme, a character you already want to have out, to nerf Vader plus to get your, your objective backside pinging. I'm looking to have the extra Skywalker in play, the game text on this actually has extra bonuses, if you can put it with Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon, or Shmi. I haven't had pushed me. Maybe I should push me in the deck given that. But right now I'm rocking with Qui Gon and you know occasionally Obi Wan. It's possible you want Shmi to subtract one from their destiny and then you can add one to attrition. Um, you know I might try that out at some point. You've got this card works. This Obi Wan works with your objective. Lets you search your deck for red cards and um, lets you also deploy minus two to Tatooine. So you could play multiple copies of this if you want. You, it's hard to find if you're if you're gonna want to have a space package, which I do. It's 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 a lot of heavy space package. It's pretty light. Still, your space is your space becomes really tight. So, I'll talk about some of those flex slots now. Card you can build this deck in many different ways. You can play all kinds of cards that you think are gonna help you hold down the ground. I mean, I like to have a card against Phantom Menace. That's helpful because that can be annoying. Well, I like to have a card or two against Veers and Walkers. So the, here I have two, I believe. I've got Mechanical Failure, and I've got a new one. Let's see if I can remember what it's called. It's not that one. Um, well, oh, here it is. Either way, you win once per game. You can cancel a character's game tech. You're going to use that on Veers. This, because your lightsabers don't work against Walkers, it can be tricky. It can be tricky when that when it comes down like that, and that's how it shakes out. So you want to have a couple, you know, again, you want to think about, okay, I've got something against opposing lightsabers. i got something against opposing walkers. Think about the different ways it could play out at the junkyard specifically. If I can hold the junkyard and just w be there all game force training, 
okay, I'll figure out what else I want to do. I, is that, am I going to now also try to get most Espo and just get a couple drains or two going? Am I going to go to where my opponent's at? Um, that's, am I going to try to hold a system and actually, you know, really hang tough there and just have system, let's say Tatooine and Junkyard. How that plays out depends on what the opponent's up to, but with this setup now, you've got a number of sites you have to cover, but thankfully, you know, it's not that hard to move around. This old one has land speed too, but just in general, like, you know, the Jedi can walk around, and hopefully that your Jedi are beefy enough to, to, to keep things under control, especially Qui-Gon can often, you know, once the junk guards are well defended, maybe slide over and hold one of these other sites on his own. So that's the long and the short of it with hyperdrive. You're restricted in character develop in character which characters you can use. That's a main weakness. Your activation out of the gate's not great, and you have to go fast. But if you can go fast, and that's the fun of it for me, if you can go fast, hit the junkyard hard and hold the junkyard, then you're going to be doing something that's pretty hard to race with, between all the different retrievals and pings that you end up with when you're flipped. It's going to be hard to keep up with you, even if you're only controlling a, a couple locations. I mean, I've raced somebody just sitting at the junkyard and then running around in space. I mean, that happens relatively frequently if I'm, if I'm retrieving correctly and, and that sort of thing. So lots of ways to build it. Your character package may look different than mine. Certainly, the, which reg cards you choose might look different than mine. But something to try out. It's a lot of fun. You've got now with the new set, a lot of new toys that help you pull Jar Jar, which who, you know, who can then pull other things like Brisky Morning Munchin to get that Jar Jar sticky so you have that extra ping on the backside, get you a general on the ground so that your rebel leadership is online. Some of the things I'm planning to try now with these new cards. So I'm excited to try them. That's Hyperdrive. Um, my favorite deck. And just, you know, if you just itching to play some of these episode one characters, try out some of the new cards, check out this new Anakin. This uh, little kid Anakin, um, I'm excited to try. I hope you are too.